In this video, I'm going to share a few things that help me when I'm feeling stuck in a rut. One thing that I want to start out with right out the gates is that there's a lot of nuance between allowing yourself to feel your feelings and then getting so sucked into them that you become consumed by them. Of course, I find it very important to honor your feelings and not be in a state of resistance around them. When we're in resistance to things, we create stuck energy in our aura and that stuck energy magnetizes and usually manifests in the physical world, creating more situations over and over again of a similar nature until we eventually face what we're in resistance to. Until we eventually look at what we're in resistance to and try to understand it, hold space for it, go within, learn the lesson, and eventually heal from it. When we take the time to learn the deeper lessons behind what we're in resistance to, we're able to transmute those energies. This can look like holding space for what's being shown to us, taking the time to fulfill our own needs and what's being asked of us, taking a look at the contracts and agreements that we might have in place, maybe clearing some some of those out or rewriting some of them and also making room for transformation to take place. I find that our feelings, especially the ones that don't feel as good, are great teachers and indicators of what needs more love and attention within ourselves. So on one hand, we have completely being in resistance to our feelings. On the other hand, we have allowing ourselves to feel our feelings. And then within this path is the nuance of becoming consumed by our feelings. When we're consumed by our feelings and we're stuck in them, we don't have any room within ourselves. We don't create the space to transform and grow and learn from them. I also think this topic's very nuanced because I don't think we should be feeling our feelings with the sole intention to change them, but rather I think we should be feeling our feelings with the intention to understand them and eventually understand ourselves. And then with that understanding, learn how to fulfill what's being asked of us. So in those moments when I feel like I'm consumed by my feelings, I feel like I'm stuck in them with no room to grow. I always like to ask myself, do I want to keep feeling this way? And sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes I'm not fully done processing whatever feeling I've been feeling. Oh my God, I've been saying feelings like 80 times, but sometimes I'm not quite finished with processing an emotion. In the other instances, when I ask myself, do you want to keep feeling this way? And the response that I get is no. Then I ask myself, if you don't want to keep feeling this way, what is it that you would like to feel? and I take it from there. Staying in a constant state of communication with myself is so important and helpful, especially when I'm navigating a rut because I get to recognize when I feel like I'm in a state of completion and then eventually move on to the next step, which is creating more room for me to transform my emotions. I have a whole podcast episode dedicated to this topic called what I do when I feel like absolute caca and I think it's really helpful and relevant to this topic and so I'll link it in the bio and you can check it out below. Alternatively, if you're at a point in time where you still need to take some time to process an emotion, I have a video for that as well that I hope you'll find helpful. I'll link that down below or I guess I'll put it here if I can figure out how to do that. So over the past few weeks, I've felt a bit stuck in my emotions and I've come to a point where I realized that I no longer want to feel this way. I've been navigating my way out of my rut and I'm going to share a few things that have helped me along the way. Look at that. I don't know what it is about weeding. Actually, I do know what it is about weeding. I get to be down and dirty outside. I get to have the sun on me. I get to be out in nature. I get to have my hands in the literal dirt. And it's super satisfying to pull things from the root. This is a big one. <laughs> this is very symbolic. How hard it can be sometimes to get to the roots. I think I need a call for help. This is a bit dramatic, but I think it'll do. It's pretty obvious why this is therapeutic. Oh, there we go. 
So I want to share a few of the flower essences that I've been working with as I've noticed myself feeling a little down in the dumps. These are my friends and I want you to meet them. One of the reasons I find flower essences to be such powerful allies is I notice that they fill in the gaps in the spaces where I find it difficult to fill in myself. These flower essences step in and help support me in a way to feel whole or help remind me of what's already in myself so that I can feel full. And so I hope that by sharing these essences, maybe you can find one that really resonates with you and incorporate it into your own daily life. So the first essence that I want to share is St. John's Wort. I know that this is a really powerful essence, especially for those who struggle with depression. St. John's Wort really works with the energy of light, and it helps me personally remember the light within myself. The next one I want to share is Bleeding Heart. So lately, I've been working a lot on learning how to receive as much as I give. And I think that I often have this imbalance of what I'm comfortable giving out versus what I actually feel comfortable with taking in and I feel like I'm dishing out a lot more than what I'm letting in and it's been leaving me feeling kind of depleted. Bleeding Heart is a really powerful flower essence for the heart, obviously, and it helps me recognize my worth and find self-love so that it feels safe to receive just as much as I give. The next essence is corn. I've shared this before and I feel like I've shared St. John's wort before too in a different video, but corn is a very powerful essence to help ground your energy. And I've noticed that lately I've been feeling really scattered. I think I have a lot of tendencies to spread myself really thin and get distracted easily, just having so many hands in different pots. And so corn is helping me ground and center my energy so I don't feel like I have to be everywhere at once. It helps me focus and tune back into myself, centering my energy. And then we have garlic. Whew, okay, garlic is a really, really, really powerful one, especially if you find yourself susceptible to low vibrational states and within those low vibrational states having parasites or attachments or other like low vibrational thought forms come into your space to feed off of you when you're in a lower vibration so garlic helps detox and ward away and almost shield up against parasites that are hoping to feed off of you not feeling good it's almost like warding off vampires you know what i mean Okay, and so the last essence that I've been working with for quite some time now is wild oat. Wild oat helps us authentically connect to our purpose and helps drive motivation to really use that purpose to serve the greater world around us. Like I said before, I've kind of felt myself being spread thin and sometimes with all these distractions around me, it's difficult for me to focus on what's important. And so Wild Oat has been a wonderful friend in helping me remember what's important and remember what is my natural medicine, like what is within me, how I can use that in service to others. I feel like lately, at this time in my life, a lot of my thoughts are consumed with my career path, what I'm doing, how I'm going to be making money, how I can support myself and continue to live in this world, which is sometimes very challenging. And it's become a stress for me. It really has, in all honesty. And so when I remember my purpose and what I'm here to do, it kind of alleviates that stress. And it is in my honest belief that when I'm in service and when I feel fulfilled and that when I continue to do this work, I will be supported. So I'm heading over to a float spa. Um, it's one of those individual chambers where you get to float in a high concentration of Epsom salt. And it's supposed to be really good for just soaking your body, letting your muscles relax. And I find that it's a really nice space to meditate in. So I'm hoping that it'll be really relaxing. Anyways, I'm heading there now. So I just got out of the float spa and I'm usually like um, an eat at home, there's food at home type of girl. But today I decided to honor my craving and get a little treat from Panda Express. I really love their um, green, their power greens. 
they're so good. When I had a life coach, one thing that she really drilled into me was making sure to do something kind and loving to myself with intention every single day. And it's really interesting because an act of love for ourselves can look different every single day. Some days it looks like getting yourself a fast food treat. Other days, it could be making yourself a home-cooked meal. And it depends on what's nourishing for you on that particular day. It really invites you to be flexible. Mm, 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 mm. Let's see what my fortune says. I hope it's a good one. Aw. You are admired by many. Don't send me the evil eye, though. 